Hi again, this is Sean Blackwell from BipolarAwakenings.com. Imagine that you go to an amusement park and buy a ticket to go on the Ferris wheel, but once you're on the ride, it turns into a roller coaster. Or maybe you went to a restaurant and ordered that filet mignon and got sushi instead? I'm sure that some of you would be thrilled, but others would be disappointed because you didn't get what you paid for, right? Well, when it comes to either holotropic or bipolar breathwork, that experience happens quite a bit. Because when it comes to breathwork, you usually don't get what you want, but you always get what you need. And what do you need? Well, don't you need to heal? Holotropic breathwork has been known to heal a wide variety of problems, from alcoholism and drug addiction to PTSD and depression. Since 2013, I've been using bipolar breathwork, a modification of holotropic breathwork, to help people heal their bipolar disorder. In fact, my very first three clients are all free of bipolar symptoms, medications, and hospitalizations for three years now. And having dedicated myself to this subject since 2007, I'm convinced that anyone who has the determination to heal the disorder can do so using this approach, provided that they just stick with it. As you will come to understand, healing is a gradual process and only so much healing can be done at once. So what experiences will come your way using bipolar or holotropic breathwork? Well, funny enough, some of the most disappointing experiences are the most important. The first experience is, well, nothing. For reasons we can only guess at, new breathers often go into a sort of sleep during their breathwork sessions. Only, it's not a normal sleep. It appears to be more of a merging with non-dual consciousness, or the Godhead. There, people usually feel deeply relaxed and peaceful. Unlike regular sleep, they usually have some awareness that they're in this peaceful void. Sometimes they come back after a session of two or three hours and think that it's only been 20 minutes. Needless to say, having to pay for nothing can feel like a letdown. However, becoming gradually more relaxed and trusting in the breathwork process seems to be an important first step for many people, and this gentle rest in non-dual space is the perfect place to start. Now, don't get the wrong idea. Not every beginner is going to have this special nothing that facilitators call the shamanic sleep. Each breathwork session is quite unpredictable and unique to each breather, but it's a common occurrence. Strong physical sensations are also a very common part of initial breathwork sessions. It may not sound like much, but many initial sessions begin with an intuitive need to stretch and contort the body to relieve deep tension. This is hardly a psychedelic experience. In fact, it can look a lot like yoga, except that the yoga teacher is your own inner healer. The release of tension can lead to strong shaking or tremors, which at some point can appear to be involuntary. One very common experience which new breathers can find quite scary is Tatani. With Tatani, parts of the body, especially the hands and feet, may tense up until they feel like they're locked. On occasion, the breather may feel that they simply cannot move at all, that they're stiff as a board. While certainly a shock, the intention of the Tatani process is to bring all of your tensions to the surface so that they can be released. When the experience of physical tensions becomes very difficult, a Groff certified facilitator can help the breather with a form of body work. Following guidance from the breather, the facilitator will apply physical resistance to the body part where the breather has asked for contact. Then the breather will work against this resistance in order to emphasize and express the tension as much as possible. Notice that this is not a massage process. The facilitator is not rubbing the source of tension in order to ease the stress. Quite the opposite. The breather is actively encouraged to intensify their experience in order to work through the very difficult physical material as best they can. Remember, when it comes to breathwork experiences, the only way out is through. Performing body work on breathers is a fundamental part of facilitating a workshop and takes intensive training. If you're doing a bipolar awakenings healing retreat, I'll demonstrate the wide variety of physical resistance we can provide which can help you work through the various tensions which are found throughout the body. Sometimes hot or cold kundalini energies may surface as part of this process as well. 
Breathers may find themselves to be boiling hot one minute, then freezing the next. My experience to date is that when people have deeper disorders, their first retreat is often dominated by physical sensations. It's as if the bioenergetic system of some clients was mostly offline or shut down, and that the inner healer had to bring them back online before the deeper, more emotional work could even start. Next comes biographical content. From the very beginnings of psychology, Dr. Sigmund Freud recognized that childhood trauma, especially what happens to us in relationship to our mother and father, plays a huge role in our own personal development. From the transpersonal perspective, these traumas are composed of difficult life experiences which, at the time, we protect ourselves from feeling entirely. If an experience becomes too much for us to handle, our psyche creates a blockage there, protecting us from the experience. Unfortunately, these energy blockages go on to negatively influence our entire lives, creating automatic defense responses in any situation that reminds us, on a subconscious level, of the traumatic event. We unknowingly project the unconscious material onto the people around us in our daily lives, causing unnecessary drama. It's common that the traumatic events in our lives are only partially remembered or even entirely forgotten. That's why people usually don't feel that they're traumatized. Their entire traumatic experience is often blocked out. Memories of traumatic experiences can rise to the surface in extremely vivid ways. More than simply being a returning memory, the breathwork session can feel as if you're reliving the experience in its entirety. Moni Kay's video series, My Bipolar Healing Experience, provides many examples of how vivid and difficult these breathwork experiences can be. For anyone considering doing a Bipolar Awakenings Healing Retreat, I highly recommend that you watch this video series. Trauma can take a wide variety of forms, which I've talked about in my Bipolar or Waking Up video titled Healing the Trauma of Bipolar Disorder. In that video, I discuss how trauma can be rooted in physical abuse or bullying, sex abuse, and verbal abuse. Sudden tragedies, such as a car accident, a house fire, or a death in the family can also be traumatizing. These traumas can occur at any time in our lives, not only in childhood. In my own spiritual emergency, I was partially dealing with a trauma that had occurred during a scuba diving accident, which had happened just a few months earlier. Emotional repression is also a form of trauma which surfaces during breathwork. It's common for people to simply release raw anger, sadness, or even repressed joy. Repressed sexual energies can also surface and should be dealt with by the facilitator with great sensitivity and respect. Sometimes we are fully aware of the event related to these emotions, but other times the emotions surface without any clear origin. Birth Trauma Prior to Groff, psychology considered babies as sort of tabula rasa, a blank slate, coming into this world free of any memories or traumatic issues. However, from exploring the depths of the psyche, it became obvious to Groff that trauma occurring during the birth process plays a huge role in our daily lives. Just a few of the wide variety of psychological complexes which often have roots in the birth process are having recurring sensations of feeling trapped, feeling that you're suffocating or being strangled, feeling that your life is being controlled by others or that you always have to fight for your life, feeling unwanted not only by your parents but by others as well, and having an intense need for sadomasochism during sex. Breathwork regularly brings up content from the birth process in the experience of breathers. In some cases, the content comes in short bursts of experience, like feeling a need to have pressure on the head for a few minutes. In others, however, the breather may feel the need to work through the entire birth process. In that case, the facilitator must hold the breather in such a way that the breather can have the sensation of struggling through the birth canal. Needless to say, simulating the birth process of a breather takes quite a bit of hands-on training and experience. Once the rebirth occurs, there is usually a warm sense of satisfaction with the breather, along with a strong desire to be hugged. Having completed the struggle of their birth process, breathers often feel as if they had been through a battle, but that the battle was over and they had been the victor. Transpersonal Experiences One of the most interesting aspects of both holotropic and bipolar breathwork 
is that while some experiences are clearly rooted in our life history, others come from an entirely spiritual or archetypal dimension. It's as if you're in touch with an intelligent energy within you and this energy wants to communicate its contents. Like a dream, the energy communicates through images and feelings that convey a certain personal meaning for you. For example, when Moni Kay was having the experience of being a seahorse and later a jellyfish, she said to me, they don't have bones. Having been a karate kata world champion, Moni had developed quite a hard persona. This breathwork experience was getting her in touch with her softer, boneless side. While this experience may sound surreal, if not impossible, having animal experiences, as if you're another species, are a common part of both holotropic and bipolar breathwork. In my own sessions, I've had experiences related to being a tiger, a dog, and even a salamander. That one made me laugh a lot, and funny enough, helped me work through a period of sadness. Other experiences seem to take us across time and space, putting us in contact with other moments in history, other cultures, as well as an infinite variety of life forms, with each experience holding for us some symbolic meaning. Spirit encounters, both good and evil, can occur in this realm as well. Many people today don't believe in the devil anymore, but let me assure you that dark or demonic energy is something that most people carry with them and will come up during the breathwork process. Of course, the divine loving energies can appear as well, as a messiah figure, an angel, or simply as a reassuring voice. In one instance, a new breather saw a spirit flirting with her. This made her feel happy and more comfortable to continue the breathwork process. Ancestors, dear relatives who have passed away, have also been known to appear in breathwork sessions. Often their communications are deeply meaningful to the breathers themselves. One transpersonal experience is quite similar to the Buddhist concept of samadhi, where the breather feels a deep sense of unity and belongingness with all of life, or a connectedness with the planet or the universe. Breathers coming out of experiences such as these can feel that their life has had a lasting transformation for the better. So to sum up, your breathwork experiences will come from one of four realms. The physical or bioenergetic realm, where the experiences may not seem related to any previous memory. From the biographic, which comes from your life history. From the perinatal, which is from your birth process. Or from the transpersonal realm, which is an entirely spiritual dimension. Now, what exactly are you supposed to do when you're having these experiences? Well, remember, everything happening is happening inside of you, not around you. So you'll always want to stay on your breathwork mat and keep your eyes closed as much as possible. You'll also want to maintain a somewhat sacred tone, at least initially, and remember to keep an open mind for whatever arises. By far, the biggest obstacle for new breathers is self-censorship. Thinking that what you're feeling is just your imagination or somehow stupid or not appropriate. Make no mistake about it. With holotropic breathwork and bipolar breathwork, you're encouraged to really let it all out. Then, with whatever comes to the surface, surf that holotropic wave as best you can. Express your inner healer. To do that, you'll want to move, shake, stretch, roll, even dance. Although I'll ask you to either dance laying down or on your knees, as standing up you may lose your balance. Vocalize, scream, sing, roar, moo, and any profanity you need to blurt out is perfectly acceptable. Of course you're going to want to release your emotions, cry, laugh, howl. And with all that said about expressing yourself, stillness is also perfectly fine, provided that it's stillness that's really coming from your heart. And here's a little trick that the advanced breathers know. The more you can express your inner healer, the deeper and more healing that inner healer will be for you. Almost as if the wave the surfer is riding becomes more awesome the better they surf it. So now that I've explained the wide variety of experiences that people can have in holotropic breathwork or bipolar breathwork, I have a question for you. What are you waiting for? Hit that wave!